when a user access any web application on their browser, it seems to be a two step process for them. First where user sends the request to the server and second is server sending the response back with the processed data. But there are a lot of other processings happen during these two steps. There are multiple layers in between. In today's video, we will see what all is happening to a request submitted by a user to Spring MVC application and how the response is traveled back to the user after processing. In this video, we will talk about all these components such as filters, front controller, interceptors and other layers of MVC application. So let us start with the request flow. At first, user will hit a URL from their browser. Once it reaches the desired server for processing, the first component it encounters is filter. Filter intercepts the request before it reaches the dispatcher servlet. The request may be intercepted by one or more filters which are configured in the application. Now you might be wondering what is dispatcher servlet. Dispatcher servlet is a front controller in Spring MVC application. We will discuss that also in detail. Now moving back to filters. So what we can use filters for or why do we have filters? Using filters we can perform operations such as logging, authentication, authorization or modifying the request parameters before passing the request to dispatcher servlet. Once the request is processed from filter, it reaches the dispatcher servlet which serves as a front controller for Spring MVC application. As its name suggests, it will dispatch the request to appropriate controller which will serve the URL accessed by the client. Now before the request actually reaches the controller, there is one more layer in between which is an army of interceptors. Interceptors are similar to filters. They intercept requests before they reach the method in controller which will serve the request. We can intercept the request at specific lifecycle stages just like filters. Requests can be intercepted before they reach the controller's handler method that is known as pre-handle or it can be after the controller method is invoked but before view is rendered which is also known as post handle. We can also have some processing of the response once the view is rendered which is after completion. Now once the interceptor processing is complete then front controller use handler mapping to select the appropriate controller for the request processing. Handler mapping maps the request URL to a specific controller method based on the request mapping annotations or configuration available in the controllers. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose a user has initiated a request with slash application slash customer and provided customer ID in the path of the URL. If we have a controller with method let's say find customer and it is configured to serve request of type get with the URL mapping slash application slash customer slash customer ID then handler mapping will identify the correct controller where this mapping is present and return the correct controller object to dispatcher servlet. Now the dispatcher servlet has the detail of controller which can serve the request then it invokes the controller method by passing along the request parameters. The controller method typically interacts with service layer to perform business logic retrieve or manipulate data and prepare the model for rendering. Controller method will decide which service will be used to process the request. Service layer performs business logic. Its components contain application specific logic such as validation, transformation and coordination with the database operations. Service classes interact with DAO components to perform database operations. DAO stands for data access object. DAO layer of the application interacts with the database. DAO components are responsible for interacting with the underlying data source which is typically a database. DAO layer components may use technologies like JDBC, JPA or Spring Data for database access and manipulation. DAO layer will return the data requested by service layer and then service layer will use that return data to process it further before sending the required response back to controller. Now at this point controller have the required processed data which it needs to send to the client. The last thing it needs is identify which view it should return which can render the processed data. 
for that it will call view resolver and in turn view resolver will decide the view to be returned and fill in the model data to generate a proper response. From this point the journey of response will start in exactly reverse order of request processing. After controller return the view with model data, it will first pass through the interceptor configured under post handle and after completion. After that the response will pass through the front controller which is a dispatcher servlet. It is the same component which decides what URL mapping will go to which controller for processing. Now after receiving response back, the front controller will send it back to the client by passing it through configured filters. In the end, user will be able to see the response in desired view with processed data. With this, one cycle of request and response is completed. Too many steps, right? But these steps make sure that the system is robust and scalable with clear separation of concerns. Even though it was a long workflow, I hope you have enjoyed this session. In the next video, we will start with coding session and see how we can create an MVC application from scratch. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.